So let's get started. Um, so today we're gonna dive into quasi quotation. Um, I think unfortunately I have not um, I have finished the whole chapter. There is some last part that I didn't um, do. Um, so we're gonna see uh, quoting, unquoting, and stuff like that, which we already see so by Maria uh, in the Mariela in the previous chapter. So um, Hadley started by saying, um, which I don't usually um, actually understand what Hadley exactly meant by this statement when he said, when used alone, quasi quotation is most useful for programming. But uh, when you combine with other techniques, study evaluation becomes a powerful tool for data analysis. So Hadley is referring to the statement that um, when using programming to generate codes, um, quasi quotation is useful. But when you are doing data analysis, quasi quotation is not useful, terribly useful, but tidy evaluation. What does that mean? Um, I'm really confused by what he meant by this. So uh, does that mean we don't use quasi quotation in tidy evaluation? Um, I think he refers to both the same. So he, he means quasi quotation is already a powerful tool, but uh, quasi quotation is also implanted in tidy evaluation. Yeah. So okay. that's, I, I think it's the same what he says, but he don't want to repeat quasi quotation down there. Right. So um, when we are doing data analysis, um, uh, people, if they are not, I'm terribly concerned about some kind of programming. The tidy evaluation is sufficient, right, to do a lot of things for quasi quotation, right? So, um, Hadley started with the motivation for the chapter, um, uh, where he says, um, "Let's look at use paste with quoted argument here." Um, when we use this, we can see it gives us good afternoon, something like this. But um, Hadley used a function called cement, and he tries to do the same thing with this. And every argument, as you can see, is automatically quoted here. We just have um, good afternoon, Alice, as we have here. But if you look at it here, when we use paste here, we have quoted everyone, but this one we didn't, but they are automatically quoted. But the problem comes when we want to use variables. So here, as you can see, we have name, time, and we, when we use paste, it gives us good morning hardly because time and them, they are hardly a morning. But when we use this one, we can see it actually doesn't do that. So. Uh, we must use what is called bang bang as we have already seen them to actually um, uh, use the uh, uh, what time is and what name is. So this means that we can see we have two things. One do evaluate and the other quote. So first evaluate is this argument. So we must cost where needed because it evaluate its argument, so we must quote where needed. Uh, that is why Smain uh, quotes its argument, so we must unquote where needed. So here we can see Smain, it uh, actually quotes its argument, so we must unquote. So here we are doing unquoting. So this actually motivated the chapter, and also there's an, another example here that motivates. So basically this um, today's slide I'm um, adapted from the, one of the previous uh, session. Um, this is one, um, question that was posted in our um, for the um, the channels that someone is trying to actually use this name here, but it's actually having some issues. So color reflects him, and we need to encode these variables. So here we have something like this, where as you can see, we use um, different data set. Um, so this is basically the motivation here. But also we can see here um, this guy doesn't use equality sign here, we use something called um, 
wireless operator. Am I right? So um, what is the difference between here? We normally use a quality sign, but here we use wireless operator. Uh, so this is another thing that we may see in the subsequent chapter. But, um, but um, another motivation uh, before we come to the previous chapter while I was looking for the meaning is this. So this is it. They said the rule of thumb is if you are using any form of quasi question, this example, this on the left hand side of this assignment, you need wireless operator. So in this case here, where we have uh, var, which is we are using quasi and it is left hand side, then we must use wireless operator. Um, so this is basically, uh, you can see an example here. Let's assume we have this um, and uh, we actually want to, for example, use this. As you can see this, uh, we, we use bang bang here and we use equal sign. So this will give us an error. Uh, why? Because if we are using this in the left-hand side, we are using quasi equation in the left-hand side, then we must use wireless operator. So here will work and that what we have here. Um, no quasi operator. So here, if you look at it here, um, no quasi on the left-hand side. So this is enough. If you look at this here, where you're not using quasi uh, because this um, we are not actually um, using, so this one works. Um, but we also make sure that um, wireless of only works in function that supports quasi quotation. So if you look at this one here, um, let's use list this will give us an error because list is not quasi, it's not a function that support quasi quotation. But also if you look at this list tool from our rank, it support quasi quotation. And you can see when we do this a kind of assignment, this one works. So I'm not quite sure if this is um, uh, this, uh, because this one I just copied it from Stack Overflow <laughs> question. So I don't know if this rule of thumb is true or not. Um, if someone can expand more or not, uh, I don't know. if. Uh, this is true uh, because I just copied it from uh, Stack Overflow. Um, is that right? Yeah, I think so because uh, um, R doesn't allow expression as argument names. So I think that's uh, always the okay. case. Right. Okay. But I okay. cannot use it with the assignment operator. So I cannot um, double bang and then assignment and then something. Um, what do you mean? Um, so um, for instance, here we have bang bang, right? Yeah, I, I just uh, in the chat I made an example, which I think uh. does not work actually. Mm -hmm. Ah. Yeah, so that's what they said. Um, wireless work with function that use, uh, I mean, quasi quotation, which is basically Erlang. I don't know, or tidy ever. Um, I don't know, Brett, um, is that right? Um, when we say tidy ever or Erlang, we are simply referring also uh, in this sense, quasi quotation, right? Or um, this kind of uh, stuff. Yeah, I think that's, I remember reading that somewhere that it's it's only, you know, that the, the the walrus operator is only available in things like dplyr because it's it, because it uses tidy eval. Hmm. Yeah. So if you look at this one here also, because uh, this is not um, a function from Arlang, it doesn't work, but this one, you can see it works. Yeah. yeah. And also, um, yeah. All right, but also um, uh, if you look at this one here, we use quasi here and we have fit and test lane and um, we basically, um, all right, yeah, yeah, that's, that's fine. But here also, um, if we don't use any quasi, so the quality sign is all right. So I think um, we are um, in agreement with why we use uh, wireless for that. So basically this is um, some kind of uh, motivation. So the next thing hardly discusses um, vocabulary um, for even this, which we have already also seen it in the first um, uh, session for this uh, meta programming, and in an evaluated argument always are evaluations rules, and 
a quoted argument is captured by the expression and is processed in cons some custom ways, which are basically what we see. Oh, okay. Um, so this is an exercise from the chapter. Um, we may um, try it. Um, so here he says, for each function in the plowing base R, identify which argument are quoted, which are evaluated. So um, here we have mass. Is it quoted or evaluated? So we see um, empty cars. Is it quoted or evaluated? Um, who can answer this one? We have the mass here. I, I really like his his test in the text. You know that you if you can evaluate it on its own on the command line, then it's yep. evaluated. If you can't, it's quoted. So this is yes, good, good yes. Yeah, so this is basically the straight answer why um, it is quoted. So if you look at them here, um, this one mass if you uh, is quoted because if you run mass only, it gives us an error. But when we run something like this, is uh, um, it, uh, it it will run and give us something, right? Um, okay, this is another exercise. Let's move on. Um, this is exercise. Let's skip it, right? So the next part is um, um, quoting. So we're gonna see, as I said, um, the motivation, then the first one quoting. So this one quoting also, we have um, seen it in the uh, previous sessions. Um, so the first part of course, the quotation is quoting. That is capturing expression without evaluating it. And as uh, I've seen a uh, previous session, uh, Hannes and um, Mariela, they explained this again. Uh, but we are repeating it here. So how to capture expression? We just basically use this X and we can capture expression. Uh, the same way we use this to capture expression. Uh, but also we can actually um, use um, expression to um, capture uh, argument exactly as provided within the function. Uh, so uh, here, as we can see here, uh, we can use that, and uh, if we have this F1, we can uh, have that. So this we can see is not terribly really, um, useful. This is not what we use. So if we want to capture something from function, then we can use um, at an expression, which is uh, expanded, or what do you call it? Uh, in X, yeah, in X expression. And we can see that when we use this, rather than using this X, then we have this. So this one we can only capture expressions, but an X we can uh, capture um, argument within the function. Right. So, how to also capture multiple arguments uh, in the functions? So we use this n X to capture multiple arguments. So we can see here um, we define this, and we can capture. So this is um, then capturing symbols. So um, we use and sim or and sims to, uh, to capture symbols um, or string. Um, as you can see here, we have um, a function, we have and sims, and when we have this x, we can capture it. But um, also, if it is string, it will convert it to this. But um, I have a question. Um, so, um, does that mean and sims and and sims are the same? So enzymes is, is it used for string and enzymes is used for symbols? What is the difference between the two? No, the one takes more than one. So the mm. enzymes takes, takes a vector at least. Okay. And enzymes? Only one symbol, yeah. Ah, okay. All right. Um, also, what is the motivation? I was like wondering um, why do we, why, why, when do we need to use enzymes um, as motive, just when we want to return um, the name of the variable. Well, yeah, I so mean, in that case, what's the difference between that and uh, um, an expert? Ah, okay. Um, Brett, can uh, you uh, come again? Well, so if you're, so like here, if you're capturing the, um, uh, I'm, I'm losing it already. So, uh, so like in this use of it, what's the difference between that and uh, um, an expert? Because you're capturing mm -hmm. the symbol, not the, not the mm -hmm. environment. With it, with okay. Um, mm -hmm. 
not at the expiration, right? Yeah. I mean, it's also for safety, I think, because Ensim cannot uh, capture an expression. So you are okay. only, only awaiting a single symbol. Ah, okay. I think. So, so if, you're, if you're writing something and you only expect symbols and no, not a whole expression, you would write Ensim. Uh, I, I think, I mean, we can try it. We, we could try to uh, capture with Ensim an expression, but I think it gives you an error, actually. Oh, all right. Okay, thanks. So, yeah, so um, so we have seen Kotlin. So basically, um, Arlang provides Kotlin and also BSR provides its own one. So um, uh, this is basically um, the uh, one provided by Arlang. Um, so for one code, we use X. And um, if you want to capture a user um, input, we use an X. And for many one, we use X. And for many also here, we use this. Um, but also this R for Y equivalent of all these, and uh, which is used in code, Elise, and substitute. So I, I think people are familiar now uh, um, with um, the Arlang functions uh, because they are easier, but we should also be from, uh, be aware that uh, this R also provide these quoting functions. Um, so uh, does anyone find um, the this R quoting functions um, in some ways more useful than the Arlang? I mean, more useful, uh, you can say if you're writing a package, you probably should try to keep it base and not depend uh, on something different. Why? I, I mean, that's up to discussion probably. Okay, okay, okay. So, um, Hannes, you are recommending or saying that if you are writing function, then maybe you should consider using the base R. Um, uh, base. A, a package. Yeah. yeah, in a package, okay. Mm. Interesting. I mean, right. your your package would uh, grow in size and everything if you're importing for everything. Okay. Uh, external packages mm -hmm. because the end user must install all packages um, if you are importing them. I see. Okay. Okay. So if you are using the base R, the end user need not to install all these dependencies. Yeah. So the package may be lightweight. Ah. Oh, okay. Interesting. Mm. So this is um, uh, from quoting, and um, this is uh, the exercises from the section of quoting. How is X implemented? <laughs> so hardly is we can also see the documentation for that. So this is how it is X implemented. So. I don't know how to explain this. Um, can someone? Mm. It, it has to use an expert so that it yeah. gets what you actually put into the expert mm -hmm. function. Otherwise, you just get X or Why? Uh, you just get EXPR out of as the result. But why do you use an ASPR? Well, so, uh, OK, so um, it, it if you think of this like that, uh, like the example between expert and nexpr mm -hmm. four, um, yeah. if we if you were to replace nexpr in this in the function on the screen with uh, expert, mm -hmm. um, the answer would always be, or the the uh, the expression return would always be expr. Yes. Um, so so ironically, it has to use nexpr <laughs> in a function to do expr. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Right. Yeah, okay, let's move on from this. Um, so let's move on again. Uh, okay, this is another question. Um, so let's see the previous question. What happened if you try to use NX with an expression is? What happened if NS is past missing argument? Mm -hmm. 
So here we just use expression, an export with expression. So um, it returns an error. So uh, we may not use this one in this case, right? Um, we can just use export in ESPR. And also what happened in if X in XPR is passing a missing argument. So um, as, as Hadley says, if we want to pass a missing argument, we shouldn't use missing, but we use this um, uh, missing. Is that right? Missing argument. Oh, I don't understand this. I, I, I ran into that function uh, a couple of weeks ago. It's a, uh, it's a different, Maybe. It, it's supplied by Arlang. It's like kind of a uh, new and improved uh, missing. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know entirely why it's improved because it still wouldn't work for the case that I wanted to. Yeah, but there's one that I say maybe missing. One, um, if you want to miss an argument, you can use what's called maybe missing. All right, um, okay. let's keep the exercises. Let's go on. Okay. Um, we can maybe discuss the exercise after. So that's um, quoting. So quoting we use to uh, quote expression. Uh, so on quoting is basically the inverse of quoting. Also, um, we have seen this one in the previous session. So it allows you to selectively evaluate code inside ASVR so that XVR is equivalent to this. So um, to unquote any expression, the first one is uh, bang or something like this. Um, so here we have a uh, quoted expression and that uh, when we went to have this, the value of this, then we can use this bank operator, which is basically this. And we can see here, this is the um, AST3 for that. We all have the expression um, looking at the order of precedence. Um, then we have the function. Then we can see um, the uh, this bank, which is, I think this is the represented and the, one, uh, uh, one and Y here. So also for symbols, we can use this bank operator. As you can see here, we have a sim, a sim, and uh, we have this, then we can use bank on the symbol and also it return the symbol. So, so basically we can use um, bank operator on quoting on both expression and also on symbol, which also you have this. So you can also use bang with function calls. Uh, the function call will be evaluated and the result will be inserted. So the same way um, we can use that in a function call. So we have this var and we have this and we have bang bang here. So if we want to call this function, then we can have something like this, bang one mean plus bang one mean ROI and uh, it will execute. So we can also, we can see, we can um, on code, um, a symbol, we can code expression, and also uh, we can encode um, function calls. Um, so here, uh, as you can see, the bank bank operator preserves um, operator precedence. Um, so if we have this one, x1 is this, and x2 is this, then we call this expression bank bank x1, bank bank x2. Uh, as we can see here, uh, it. Uh, works where uh, operator precedent is preserved. Um, so as we have here, the same thing exists. Right, okay. So on quoting a function. Um, so you can see now we have seen how we can encode expression. We can encode symbol and we can also um, uh, on encode function calls here. We encode function calls. And on, so how can we encode a function? So as you can see here, we have this uh, expression full and um, here we need to actually provide, um, if you look at this one here, bank bank F and we have X, Y, this one will give us something like this. Um, so we can see that um, if you actually use the previous way we provide bang bang, you just put, for example, um, expression uh, without this bracket, double bracket, you put bang bang F, X, Y, it will not work. So the function itself must be encoded within the, uh, uh, this bracket and put the bang bang. And this will only work in this way. Uh, so 
uh, is the way we actually encode a function is not the same exactly the way we encode function um function call or expression or a symbol so it's different we need to put it in this uh, format inside this bracket so uh, uh, because of the large number of parentheses, I mean parentheses involved, it can be uh, uh, Arlang provide another option, which you can actually encode a function. So you can see here, which is um, call two, which is the name of the function. So here call two actually you provide the function X, um, SVRY, ASVY. So we have something exactly. So um, uh, I don't know, um, uh, this is, Terrible, really um, inefficient, I think. Um, or oh, it's ugly, as Hadley said. It's not um, quite um, efficient way to represent it. But um, also using call two is addition of another function <laughs> to use uh, within your vocabulary. All right, so on quoting a missing argument. So this is what I was saying before. If you have a missing argument, so here we have uh, args, bang, bang, um, Expression, then this gives us an error. So uh, we shouldn't be using um, this given answer. How can we use the help? There is one helper function called maybe missing. So this is the one that will actually, uh, you can see it will transmit an argument. So missing args will not work if you want to encode missing argument. Um, the function you will use if you want to encode missing argument is maybe missing. So I think, um, Brett, uh, is that what you are talking about the other time? Um, I'll, I'll post the link from the from the uh, Slack okay. into the into the chat. Okay. Okay. But it's, it's a little different. All right. Hmm. Okay. So encoding special form in special form. So here we can see we have seen how we can encode um, several ways. Um, so this one is um, encoding in what they call um, special form. So here, for example, we have a data frame and we can we want to use um, these. To, uh, on code, on code. Um, so if you look at this one here, we have X, yes, we are, we have this and we have these bang bang operator. So we can see here, um, R cannot allow you to have these two operators at the same time. You can see we have two operators, these um, dollar sign and we have this uh, bang bang operator. So you cannot do this. So this is not gonna work if you want to uh, on code in this kind of special way. So the best way to do this is to use um, prefix expression. That's, um, I think this is one way prefix expression works. So as you can see this idea and you put the bang bang and you, um, this is the prefix expression and you uh, quote it in this way and it give us something like this. So this one will not work, but rather using um, prefix expression. So this is one way I see um, one needs to definitely use prefix expression rather than the infix expression. So um, prefix here pro proved to be useful in this sense. Okay. Um, now we have seen on quoting um, uh, one argument uh, using bang bang operator. Um, so the other operator that can be used to on quotes um, multiple argument. Um, yeah, it's called bang, bang, bang. So three bang, 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 um, which is called on court slice, supplies, on court supplies. So what does that mean? He, in, in this one on court and splice, what does that mean? I don't understand this English. Text a list of expression and ins insert them at the beginning of this. So here, as we can see, we have um, multiple um, arguments, one, a, B, and for us to do that, we must use, um, if you want to encode this expression, we must use this bang bang uh, triple, and uh, you can see we have that one. So this is um, actually a um, uh, polarization of uh, bang operator. So these operators also works only in uh, these are lang or quasi quotations. Um, their natural meaning uh, when used in R, they actually form of um, 
negation. So you see here, we have double one, it gives us true, it negate double negation. But here we can see it gives us false. So um, that's basically the what that mean. Um, so you can see here we have 100 equals bang, so bang, bang. Yeah, it gives us true because this is a true value. But when we fold the double this, it gives us false. So uh, this means that bang, bang only works with um, quasi quotation or tidy evaluation as well. Um, all right, um, so this is the same example. Um, okay, so there's another one here, uh, which actually uh, non-standard AES, um, it basically is if you um, want to, uh, if you have inline complex object, they sometimes are not printed and this leads to some kind of confusion. If So for example, here we have this inline data frame, we have class, we have expression, and when we call this one, X, we just look, see it here. So it doesn't tell us this is a data frame as you can see, but this is a data frame. So here, the one way to actually uh, find out what really works is using this function eval. So it tells us this is a, um, a data frame. So sometimes it will be confusing, you may not know. Uh, so two tools to reduce confusion um, is to use this eval x print. So if you call this x print, it will, can you see that it tells us this. Also, there's another one, lob ASD. Also, if you call it, it will give us this one. So this is another also example um, using integer in line. So we have this bang bang f an expression so if you call f uh, x it just gives us this can you see f one to five we don't know what it is so if you want to really know what that means then we use this one so this is somehow confusion if you have um, a line so i'm not quite sure if this one only uh, problem appears in inline complex objects so if it is not inline complex object maybe it no, not uh, uh, work in that sense right let's go on oh okay so this is an exercise again. Um, so um, let's see the first one example. Uh, so I'd just give us this uh, x, y, x, z, which is expression, then construct something like what will give us using bank bank operator. So use cost equation to construct the following calls. So use cost equation to construct this call. So this to construct this is just we use the bank bank X, Z, and X, Y, it will give us this. So this is it. So there are many examples here. So how can we construct this call using bank bank? So this is X plus Z, and this is Y plus Z. So X plus Z, Y plus Z. So uh, X, then we have the negative here, bank bank X, Z, and this sign, bang bang y z so this is um, some example exercises from the chapter of uh, on quoting hey i've got a question actually yep could you go back to the yeah um in the one two what oh yeah no the yeah. Uh, x plus y y plus z that stuff uh there was an example uh where they used three of them and then one of them wasn't uh bracketed do you know why um here uh one forward i think next slide i think next slide uh one more okay here yeah, see the uh one above a tan two see that x plus y is not this one this one yeah one one above uh, okay so yeah, here, why is that bracketed? Okay, so a tan to this one, right? No, one above, one above. X uh, plus y, y plus z, x plus y. Oh, this one. Yeah. Mm, okay, y plus z and this one. So, um, I think uh, they want us to um have this. I think that's the question, right? They want us to construct this one using bang bang. Am I right? Yeah, I'm just wondering why the first term yeah. is not. Yeah, okay, bracketed. I see. Yeah, I see what you mean. So uh, let's see from this one here. Um, if you look at this one here, 
bank bank x y it just put x plus x y is not bracketed mm. is it because it doesn't need to be do we want that though like i mean don't we just want it to express uh express right away um oh. i mean where it is why it, it does need to be but the it would still be it's not the correct solution actually uh, okay let's see um so we have um uh, what's the previous one okay uh, we have x okay let me see this Yeah, I guess by saying that, I'm I'm wondering if R is seeing that it it you know that it, it doesn't value it doesn't it doesn't break any rules not to have it be uh, uh, it doesn't change it not to have it be bracketed so it doesn't bracket it. I mean, would it it shouldn't be that oh. smart, should it? Oh, I yeah, that's what I'm wondering. <laughs> well, I, I'm not sure why the first one why it does. Mm. I think you can explicitly. Uh, add the brackets in if you do oh. bang bang bracket x y bracket I think. Okay. Let's see. So, Juwan, your question is is why is it not putting the brackets in when you yes when you yes run yeah yes yeah so you you want us to uh oh all right okay let's see it, yeah it doesn't need them but the code should be putting it in. Hmm. But if the, you, the, <laughs> but you, if you look at this one, it does have y plus it does have the bracket, but this yeah, one which it up. doesn't really need y mm -hmm. plus z. Yeah. Yep. Mm. Interesting. Okay. Does anyone has answer for that? Do you have the S package? Can you draw a tree with that expression? So simply S I S T. So what? So let me see this one. Why? So I'm on a different computer. So if anyone can try the tree example with this code, yeah. if it doesn't show the uh, bracket. It actually don't show any brackets. Maybe because it evaluated last down the tree. But um, is it why you said, um, John, first, should we, we put something like this? Is that what you said? Let me try this. Yeah, I can't remember exactly what it is, but I think you can put it in. Uh, it doesn't work. Okay, let me see this. So why if we put this one in, um, we double the braces here, it does work. I think it's doing the, the unquoting and then 
you know, substituting that into your your syntax and then with the with the brackets. I, I tried switching up the order and it's always that first pair that doesn't have the bracket. Ah, so it's ah. it's got to be something about how it's. Um, mm. Yeah. Okay, so you oh. switch the order and it um, it's still the same thing. Yeah, so if you do uh, expression bang yeah. bang yz yeah. plus xy, mm -hmm. the first yeah. pair of the yz is is un unbracketed. Okay. All right. So, is it bracket if you multiply it? Sorry. Like, you know, the first argument that Brent was talking about, if uh, no matter what comes first, it'll mm -hmm. always like, uh, not have the brackets. What if that's, you know, multiplying or dividing the second term? Because you'll you yes. actually need the brackets then. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. that's, that's an excellent test. I just did that and it's bracketed. <laughs> so that means that the uh, that something in this code chain is smart enough to know when it's commutative and when it's not. Uh, <laughs> I'm not so sure whether it's the quoting or the expression. So does it does it in tell us what the, um this oh no no um um operator precedence no 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 yeah it has to be right yeah right okay. so the so that means it has to be ex, it has to be expression rather than bang bang because bang bang is just operating on on the object y z so expression mm -hmm. has to be looking at this and saying okay well how do I have to um how do I have to do this so that it works? Mm. So it's okay. it's evaluating where it needs to put parentheses in the tree when it's when it's working. But but it should work if we have single parentheses if we are talking about the um, operator precedence, right? Uh, say that one more time. Um, I said. Um, Will it work if we are talking about operator precedent when, you, when we put a single um, uh, braces, but it doesn't work with single braces because if we are talking about operator precedence, when we put this one, then we are talking about this only expression bang bang, mm -hmm. but it doesn't work as well. Oh, weird. I thought we just did it. Did... I thought we did a variation of that where it did actually put the braces in when you. Yeah, with the function, no, then there was also no guarantee. That's for function, yeah. Maybe an extra an extra pair just to make it doubly sure. <laughs> yeah, it's not for expression. Okay, maybe oh, we yeah, can okay. find okay. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of, an, that's why it's called abstract tree, because it removes everything which is not needed, actually. Mm. Uh, apparently, but, except when you put it in twice, and then R is like, "Whoa, okay, I guess they're serious." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's uh, that's funny. Yeah. All right. Okay. Let's move on. I guess. Um, so, this is also another question from the same exercises, and so this um, we are using capturing this one. Um, also, this one we are capturing, uh, but we're using bang bang. So, if you look at this one here, uh, um. This should be the same, right? Uh, because we are capturing this one here. Uh, here we have this, um, but when we run the identical between A and B, it says false. Um, so yes, you can see we have this and this, but when we run them, so what, what is the difference? What is one is more natural? Uh, I, I think that has something to do how they are, say, are programmed. So this, the first one is actually gives you the what you are writing there with the one and dot dot ten and that's in the background it's never evaluated to one two three four five and the mm -hmm. second one it will be evaluated to one two three four five. Okay, the but, second one. But, yeah, that has something to do how that is written in C plus plus I think, but yeah. Yeah. Okay. So if you look at this one here, we have um, the first one here, then this, but when we use um, this, we can see it is one. But when we use xprint, as we have seen previously, you can see that um, this is actually what, this is what it means, uh, all this. But what about the other one, um, b? 
if you look at this one here, so if you look X print B, it shows us uh, really what it means inside. So this is what um, Hannes is telling us. Uh, this one is one, two, three, up to, then we have this. So um, yeah, so um, uh, this is uh, the reason uh, sometime as, as we have seen the previous one, if you have something in um, one liner, it may not actually shows you the output will not actually capture the reality what is happening. So using this kind of um, function, is these two ways using ASVR prints will tell you, or this will tell you exactly what the output is. So here we can see the main difference between the two. All right. Yep. So this is what um, the previous um, uh, um, uh, uh, previous cohort also, uh, as you can see here, they also have the same question here. And they ask this question, I think in Slack, uh, why this one um, having uh, doesn't have the, uh, and they have this answer um, that, uh, I don't know why um, exactly why, but they also have the same question and uh, using this one, but I don't know what actually the answer is, but they have the same problem as well while doing the exercises. Oh, right. Um, okay, so um, the last part here is um, non-coding. So we have seen coding functions, uh, coding we have seen on coding, and we have now this one is called non-coding. So uh, why non-coding? Uh, but we have coding, we have, um, uh, on quoting. So uh, hardly says there is one quasi question in base R, which is B quote for quoting and using these for on quoting. And because base R does not have um, quoting function, he called them non quoting functions. So um, I think. Um, as you can see here, where you use this B code, and uh, if you want um, on code, we can actually use uh, this. So this is telling us like um, we only use the braces like this to on code. So do we still um, we still use? B code to code, which we have this. And uh, when when we want to uncode, we put this in because we have this, then we use this um, and to uncode. So this is selling us um, in base R for coding, we only use B code. And <laughs> for coding, we only use this exploration. There is nothing much about that, right? Um, so, uh, so B quote is is often for, used for uh, um, quoting, like expert. Yes. Yeah, but but um, the, the use that I've seen of it before is is for for uh, formatting uh, plot titles, um, and this is like you know my my knowledge of B quote comes from before I had any idea what it was actually doing, and I was kind of just copying and pasting. Um, so I'll, I'll paste the link to this into the chat. But um, my question is is can can you do this since B quote is the base R version of uh, quasi notation? Um, can you do the stuff that you do with uh, um, with plot titles with uh, with R lying stuff? I don't think I've ever seen that. I'll, I'll paste the link into the chat and don't let it don't let it derail the presentation. We can talk about this at the end too. Um, I don't I don't catch you. Um, get you what what are you what you said, Brett? Can I come? Um, so. Where I've seen B quote before is when I'm trying to put things like subscript and uh, uh, mathematical uh -huh. notation. Okay, into, okay, yes, into plot yes, titles. yes. Um, and so I'm wondering if, since that's the base version of quasi notation, if you can use the Arlang stuff for formatting plot titles. Mm. I've, I've never seen that done. It seems like you should be able to do it, but I'm trying to wrap my head around that. Mm. Okay, I'll, I'll post the link in, and we can maybe talk about it at the end. All right. Um, so, yeah. So, um, for uh, B quote is used, I, I can see to um, uh, quote, and we use this to unquote. But um, 
how do you say there are four basic forms of non-quoting non -quoting use in BSR functions. So uh, I don't actually um, uh, understand this one, this four he mentioned, um, if someone can chime in and explain this too. Um, the first one is peer quoting non quoting function and a peer quoting non quoting argument, an argument that control whether a different argument is quoting or non quoting. Yeah, so quoting if evaluation for. So I read this one, but I don't actually understand what they meant. Can we skip that in that saying? Okay, so we can go to the next one, dot, dot, dot. Um, so um, this is the final part of it. Um, so um, dot, dot um, here, um, there are some cases where we want to use quotation um, with um, dot dot. So here, if you look at this one here, we have an example here. We are given a data frame here. And uh, for example, we want to bind uh, this data frame. Uh, we, be, we can basically do this and it gives us this. But um, one this option is to use this bind row and bang bang DFS. So, um, we can see here this one, um, DFS. I don't actually understand why this one works. So I understand how we use this, but I don't understand why this one works. Can one explain why this works, how it works? Uh, actually, what I know, it works without the banks, without, because I do that all the time. You can simply throw in a list into bind rows and it will give you the output, the clock. Okay, you mean you can use without the bang bang, it, it will also work? Yes, I, I'm pretty sure. But why hardly here use this um, triple bang bang here? I, I don't understand why. Why? I mean, Chivan, can, could you test it, please? I, I posted okay. something in the chat. Yeah. Does uh, bind rows um, internally? Uh, mm -hmm. on list, whatever you pass in. That might be why it works when you don't use bang, bang, bang. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's the answer. Uh, bind rows will take either a string of arguments and combine them, or it will say, okay, if this first argument is a list of data frames, I know I need to, you know, unlist them and combine them. Sorry, I missed the question. Um, John, what did you say? Oh, yeah. So what Hannes was saying, uh, it works without bang, bang, bang. I think that's because uh, bind rows internally, if you pass it in a list, it uh, unlists the items and then bind them together. I think that's ah. why it works. So uh, do you mean, okay, so, mm. okay. Yeah, um, okay. Yeah, Hannes, um, what you, um, your code Yeah, it works, Hannes. Yeah. Yeah. Am I am I sharing my RCG? Uh no, just uh. Oh output. okay. Oh okay. Yeah, I, 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 it works. Um, what Hannes shared. Um, so, so maybe <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, hardly use bang uh, this one. Uh, bang 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 here. Maybe uh, before the input. Uh, with, uh, bind rows. Uh, a list and I don't know. Maybe oh, it's it. new. Also. Yeah. Okay, um, so uh, and, and to come back, what what bang 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 does? It actually, I mean, it, I know it from JavaScript or other syntaxes. It explodes your list object, yeah. so so you get out the objects inside of the list. Mm. So that bang 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 TFS would translate into a comma b as output. Okay. So it's it's a destructor or something like this. I don't know how you call it. I, I always say to I explode the object, but that's probably wrong. So mm. I think it's called destructing 
That's, okay. that's really common in, in JavaScript. Okay. Yeah, I think that's so, a good analogy. When you're doing bind rows, just DFS, you're passing in one thing. And mm -hmm. when you're doing bang, 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 you're passing in A and B into bind rows. So that's why they work. And okay. I'll exactly. put the same thing. Yeah. So it my my example probably won't work if you manually add another um, object. I don't know. So if you would add a C, a data frame of C. Okay. Um, you think it will not work? Okay, let's see. Uh, It works, okay. Yeah, it works, Hannes. Yeah, it works for me too. You should that you get the same ex ex output? Yeah, one, yeah. two, two. So. Yep, same output, bang, 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 and no bang, bang, bang. Okay, yeah. Um, bang, bang. All right, yeah. So it gives the same output. So um, from base R, we can do something like this. Um, R bind DF um, to actually, uh, so do call it this the same as bind rows. Wait, say that again. Um, what do calls does in base R? I don't know. Do call executes the function you pass in as a string onto the second argument. Okay, so something um, like this, right? Okay, um, another example where we use this is um, given a variable here x and we want to set the name of data frame, we can use the set name data frame, but um, we can use bang bang here to actually name the variable, name the column of the data frame. So uh, I don't understand also this one, how it works. How do we name, how do we, why using, how this, um, okay, this is the name of the um, bar, its name. So I don't understand how this one, can someone explain? I don't actually understand. But I understand how this, we create a data frame, something like this. Um, we just set the names, um, this is the data frame and we set the name, give us this. Um, but um, how using this one give us this? I think that's the symbol as argument, right? You have to mm -hmm. use a walrus when you're trying to use a symbol as an argument. So it won't work if you just pass in the equal sign. Yeah, but you, you, you talked actually about it in, in one. Uh... Yeah, so what I mean is like, um, okay, we can have table and um, um, this um, val, what I mean is like, um, in how do we name the column uh, to be x here? Because I, I didn't see any way to name it, but just assignment. I don't know what you're saying, because you, uh, that's, that's ex exactly uh, how it works and how you, you also explained it, so. Yeah. Okay. All right. Also, this one is the same with base R where we use the do call and stuff like that. Um, oh, we have to uh, the time, I think. Um, so, um, uh, Brett, just sorry, uh, Brett, that's simply because the, the bang, bang, bang operate and everything only works in the whole tidy universe, which is really, yeah. Right, I think I was the one who actually said that earlier, but I completely forgot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and that's, that's, that's why I actually, 
I, I mentioned one time it's 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 a little bit yeah you're you're learning that stuff and you want to use it outside of of um diverse and then it won't work well yeah that's the part that i'm confused about because it's, it's a bang 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 is just a function so it should work anywhere but yeah i need to go back and review some of this <laughs> yeah all right um so i think um we come to the end um this last part I have not gone through it as well, um, which is basically using the um, dot 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 um, operator. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, we, it is already time, I think. Um, we have six minutes past. And the uh, exercises, um, right. Oh, all right. Uh, so thank you very much for the listen and uh, let's discuss questions. So basically today it was like um, trying to say, ah, let's postpone this week uh, because like today is for Muslims, today is like um, Christmas day. Um, we have been sort of <laughs> yeah, so we have what is called Eid and um, which is more or less like Christmas um, for, uh, for Christian. So <laughs> I was basically busy, um, uh, yeah, and uh, I said, you know, I, we had to come and do this thing. So how we have to congratulate you? What's what's how, how you? What, uh, that's <laughs> so, like happy Christmas. Yeah, something? happy. We Mubarak, say, we say yeah, yeah. Who is saying that? Eid Mubarak. Who said uh, that? Eid Mubarak. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but, <laughs> yes. <laughs> but I say that. Yeah, so we, we I was there celebration for the Eid, but, and I said, oh, I had to go. And I didn't finish the shelter. I was like, uh, let me write. Oh, guys, let's miss next week. I said, no, I had to come and do it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Oh, sorry. Sorry for making you present such a confusing <laughs> chapter on your, on your equivalent of Christmas. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I think uh, the next chapter is John, right? Yeah, I'll confirm on the chat with Leila if I'm still subbing. Mm -hmm. um, the, we have the evaluation is Brett, I guess. <laughs> yeah, and Hannes and I were talking about, uh, Hannes suggested combining that with the uh, um, the making things faster chapter. Uh, okay. I, th I think I'm going to do, I just want to go over it again to make sure it's not too much. All right. Okay. Um, right. Um, so for my example with the assignment which I posted earlier with the EVAR, does any so, sorry my handy is uh, does anyone know um, uh, an easier method? How we yeah, would I, yeah tried a bunch of stuff but none of them worked out for me. Uh, okay. So I, I posted again, but. Uh, that, that was the only one I could do that it works in my console. So. Um, Brett, I mm -hmm. see you posted an answer here. I, I'm looking at the chat. You said bind rows works, but R bind does not work. Yeah. So I, I think that that's related to uh, uh, what Hannes was saying, uh, was re reminding of us that uh, bang, bang, bang only works within functions that, that, have tidy ah. tell enabled. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so yeah, it's kind of the bind rows example is kind of weird to begin with since bind rows actually handles the you know the un the un unquoted um, DFS. Mm -hmm. So and and neither of them works in rbind. You have to do the the do call method. Ah. Which okay. I also don't entirely understand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's somehow confusing. And also Hadley said that um, this is the most confusing section, <laughs> the meta programming. <laughs> but I can see Joan is really enjoying the chat this uh, the meta programming. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a brain twister for me. Oh. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. All right. But that's oh, funny. I was just uh, so um, the uh, Julia Conf is, is in the next couple of weeks, and there was a thing on the, the their equivalent of dplyr this morning, and oh. 
they do a bunch like so in order to do meta programming they have macros so it's like it's it's a lot more similar to uh decorators in python mm. and so i'm finding myself going oh why do we have to do this stupid you know decorator stuff you know why don't we just you know have our have our uh, meta programming just inserted in the in the code like r but after looking at this stuff i'm like okay well it's actually nice that it tells you that something's going on here and it's showing you that it's doing a macro to replace code uh, so, so I'm, you are I'm, also working with julia well uh not much <laughs> it's like I, I find the language very interesting but I, oh. I have not found it interesting enough to to really do real work in yet i mean it's you know not not because you can't but just because of my you know it's, yeah it takes some time to learn mm -hmm. yeah i saw like um one talk like julia for our users an interesting talk i think um, i saw it this week um they are actually um showing how um uh, our users can use julia yeah i mean the you know the like so the this talk today was on the um uh the what's it called data frames.jl package mm -hmm. um but it's it's an interesting model. It's kind of like halfway in between um, vplyr and pandas, um, and you know, different from either of them. But it's one interesting thing is a lot of a lot of things in R are solved by having a new function that does something you know kind of specific to what you want to do, or either that by you know like by overloading something else. And I'm I'm not experienced enough programmer to really talk about this. So I'm going to mess it up. But um, so things like mutate um, it uses you know mutate uh, new variable name equals what you want to apply to it, which, you know, makes sense mm -hmm. in English. Mm -hmm. But if you, yes. you kind of think that through a little bit more, like we're looking at it today, that equals is actually not, a, it's not really assignment there. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, so then that means you need to use the walrus operator if you want to do, if you want to do something weird with your left-hand side. Mm -hmm. And in Julia, they use a, a, a different operator for that operation. Um, ah. but it's, a, it's a Julia operator that's, it's okay. making pairs. So it's, um, you know, so that's equals and then greater than. So it means like, um, you know, um, X is paired on Y. Mm. Uh, when you do, you know, X um, equals greater than Y. And I don't, I don't fully understand it, but it's, it's kind of nice that it's a different operator because then you're not, you know, it's not kind of like overloading in your brain. Anyway. So Julia is like, um, Combination. I mean, it takes some properties from Python and R combine them together to make it easier, right? Yeah, I I feel like it's a little, you know, again, this is like, you know, my my random observations of it, not necessarily, you know, yeah, fancy, but um, I feel like it's more symbolic. Um, oh. I mean, that's I don't know if that's right, really the right word for it because the name is a symbol, but um, you know, so uh, um, so like for instance in. So in R, when almost every function is vectorized because it's just natural to work with vectors in R, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, it's very easy to vectorize things in Julia, but um, instead of it just being the same function, um, they, by convention, add a dot to it, which says uh, broadcast. So when you add a dot to a function, it says, okay, well, um, broadcast this function onto every element of the vector that I'm passing in. Instead okay. of in, in R, it just kind of says, "Oh, it's a vector. Okay. I guess I need to do okay. everything." So, mm -hmm. so you are the one to specify if it's um, vectorized or not. Yeah, right. So if you if you uh, if you do like um, x squared, you know x x caret two, mm -hmm. um, and x is a scalar, then it'll work just fine. But if you do x squared and x is a vector, it'll throw an error. But if mm -hmm. you put a if you put a dot between the the uh, okay. front of the caret mm -hmm. operator, it suddenly says, ah, okay, this is a vector. I need to <laughs> square every element of that vector. Okay, okay. So it's a little. It's just you know, like any programming language, it's just different. But it's like very. It's more. It says more clearly what you're trying to do, I guess. Yeah. Think. All right. Um, yeah. Let me stop sharing. Uh, Marielle, you want to say anything? Uh, you're happy? <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm still here. <laughs> yeah, well, trying to understand. <laughs> um, Thank I you, think, 
Yeah, I think we can run. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, so see you next week, um, Juan, um, for the next chapter. Uh, so have a nice uh, week. See you all. All right. Cheers, everyone. Thanks, Sean. Ciao, ciao. Thanks, Sean. See you. Ciao.